Please welcome Tony Lazarowitz. Good evening, everyone. It's great to be with you. Thank you so much to the Aspen Institute for the invitation to join you. This has been such a great event already. I know I've learned a lot. I'm sure you have as well. Uh, my name is Anthony Lazowitz. I direct the Yale Program on Climate Change Communication. And we study how do Americans and other societies around the world respond to the issue of climate change? What do people understand and misunderstand about the causes, consequences, and solutions to climate change? How do they perceive the risks, so the likelihood and severity of different types of impacts? What kinds of policies do people support or oppose? And what kinds of behaviors are people engaged in that will help us maintain a safe and stable climate? But then ultimately, as scientists, our real question is answering why. What are the underlying psychological, cultural, and political reasons why some people get really engaged with this issue, others are kind of apathetic, and some are downright dismissive and hostile, or at least they are here in the United States. So one of the very first cardinal rules of effective communication is know your audience. Who are they? Where are they coming from? What do they know? What do they think they know? Who do they trust? Where do they get their, their news and information? And what are their underlying values? Ultimately, what do they care about? And then how can you tailor your approach to engage them based on where they are, not where you are? For those that saw Eric Schmidt earlier today, like I could spend an hour talking with Eric about the role of clouds and climate models. That's not an appropriate conversation for most people. Okay? So how do you meet people where they are to help connect this issue to them? So in our work, uh, starting now over 15 years ago, we very quickly realized that Americans don't have a single viewpoint on climate change, or frankly, any important issue. And then the world was often divided into climate believers and climate deniers. But that's way too simplistic and not actually very helpful. So in our analyses, we found what we've uh, since called Global Warming Six America, six distinct segments of the American public that each respond to this issue in a very different way. Now, these are defined not by demographics, but by what's in people's heads, in other words, what they believe about climate change, what's in their hearts, how they feel about the issue, and what's in their hands. What are they doing or willing to do about this issue? So let me quickly introduce the six Americas. So this is from our latest nationally representative study conducted just last September. Uh, and what we found is that 33% of Americans are what we call the alarmed. These are people who are firmly convinced climate change is happening, it's human caused, it's serious, it's urgent. They strongly support action and they're really eager to get involved themselves. The next group at 25% is what we call the concerned. And these are people who also think climate change is real, it's human caused, it's serious, but many of them still think of it as distant. Distant in time, that the impacts won't be felt for a generation or more, and distant in space, that's about polar bears or maybe some developing countries but not the United States, not my state, not my community, not my friends, not my family, not me. And as a result, it becomes psychologically distant. It just becomes one of a dozen other issues that's out there, and yes, I kind of support action, but I don't yet see why this is an urgent issue. Then a group that we call the cautious. Uh, these are people who are still on the fence. Is it real? Is it not? Is it human? Is it natural? Is it serious or is it kind of overblown? They're paying attention, but are still kind of confused. Then a small, but I think very important group at 5% that we call the disengaged. And these are people who basically say, you know, I think I once heard that term global warming, but I don't know what that is. I don't know what the causes are. I don't know what the consequences are. I don't know what the solutions are. Okay? They really, it's basic awareness is the, pro, is the primary barrier they face because they never see it in the media they pay attention to. They ne never hear about it from their friends and family. Then comes a group we call the doubtful. These are people who say, you know, I don't think climate change is real, but if it is, it's natural, just natural cycles. Nothing humans have anything to do with, nothing we can do anything about, so I don't really pay that much attention to it. And then last but not least is the group that we call the dismissive at 9%. These are people who are firmly convinced climate change is not real. It is not human cause. It is not a serious problem, and most of whom quite literally tell us that they're conspiracy theorists. They say it's a hoax, it's scientists making up data, it's a UN plot to take away American sovereignty, it's a get-rich scheme by Al Gore and his friends, and many other such conspiracy-type narratives. Now, importantly, they're 9%. They're only 9%. 
but they're a really loud 9%. They're really vocal 9%. They're more than adequately represented in the halls of Congress, and they have tended to dominate the public square to such an extent that the other 91% of Americans, many of them are afraid to talk about climate change because they're afraid that the other person they start the conversation with will get in the, an argument or a fight with them, okay? But they're only 9%. Climate change has joined sex, religion, and politics as topics people won't talk about at the Thanksgiving Day table because they don't want to upset their uncle, and it's often an uncle. <laughs> So the point is, is that there are these six very different audiences that each respond differently and they need to be each engaged in their own terms. So just to really emphasize the point that there are totally different conversations happening in this country all at the same time, we've asked Americans, if you could ask an expert on climate change one question, what, ask, what question would you ask? The doubtful and dismissive are saying, so how do you know that climate change is happening or human caused? And on a deeper level, why should I trust you? The middle groups, however, are saying, okay, climate change is real, but so what? Why should I care? How does this touch anything that I care about? Whereas the alarmed and concerned are saying, okay, I got it, it's happening, it's human cause, it's serious, but what do we do? What can I do as an individual? What can we do as a community, as a city, as a state, as the nation, and as the world? And as a community, we have generally done a much better job communicating the problem to the alarmed than we have the solutions, which is why this conference has been so exceptional. Okay, so we've been tracking the changes in these different groups for 15 years, and here I'm just showing you the last six because this is really, really important. We've seen the alarm have grown by 22 percentage points in the last six years. All the other groups have gotten smaller because Americans as a whole are moving into the alarmed. And the critical thing I want you to look at is what, where they were in 2015. The alarmed and the dismissive were basically tied at about 11 and 12%. One alarmed for every one dismissive. Today, there are nearly th more than three alarmed for every one dismissive. And that reflects a fundamental shift in the underlying social, cultural, and political climate of climate change. It means that these trends, if they continue, and they've been continuing this way for a while, are gonna help us get to the point where we uh, have more climate winds, those winds go farther, and they're gonna be more durable. And last thing to say is for those that really want to get deeper into this topic, I will be having an entire hour session just around the corner in the Truist uh, Pavilion uh, tomorrow from 3.30 to 4.30. Thank you.